<coughs> Excuse me. Didn't mean to put that on the recording, but oh well, I guess it's there now. Oh, okay. So anyhow, getting on with the second review. We're here today in the Gaiere, the tier 6 uh, German destroyer in the tech tree. We're in a rather small game, which suggests to me that this was played at a very late or very early hour. Anyhow, it's a carrier game, and we're against a Fubuki and a Bodovoyski, so starting off, looks like we forgot our camo. So we're going to be at a bit of a market disadvantage. 7.3 kilometer concealment is pretty bad. Now Gaede only goes down to something like 6.8 I believe. But nevertheless we're already working at a disadvantage. That's 7.3 so let's see what kind of equipment we're working with. Okay, so I can't hover anything as because it, it's a replay, but I can tell I have an 8km radar and I have access to a 4km hydro acoustic. Or sorry, by 8km radar I mean 8km torpedo range. So 8km torpedo range and 7.3km... Oh, uh, what's it called? Detection range isn't very much to work with, but we'll have to make do. I, I closed that. Thank, thank you very much, Wargaming. Anyhow, so initially we're starting here, standard battle, so no cap to contest at sea in, uh, in the death pit. People like going to the death pit anyway, though. So here, two destroyers, carrier game. Probably will have to play fairly cautiously. The guy that is not exactly known for his fantastic AA. What gun setup are we using? Looks like the 150s, I want to say. These look like the 150s to me. The cruiser guns. And 1600 health. Seems a bit low. Some of... I'm not sure. It's... Ernest Gaillet. 1600 health. So I would guess you're on stock hall here. Stock hall with survivability expert. With at least a 10 point captain. You're coasting in. Nope, you spotted carrier planes. That's your air spotting. Oh, I don't know your air spotting. Well, your A is off, so there's that at least. Shifting fire as the New Mexico comes up. AA is still off. Avoiding the fighter. You got a fighter screen from your allied carrier, which is nice of him. Moving towards the Alba, fighter pushes away. That's good. Hmm. Turning all the way in probably unnecessary. I probably would have just followed this Alba toward the center. Alba is broadsiding, so he's going to take a New Mexico salvo. However, if you're doing that to stay inside the fighter cover, that's fine. Uh, generally, though, a and generally though the rocket planes won't necessarily harass you once they leave, in my opinion. So I probably would have just followed the Alba out into the center since that is eventually where you want to go. So the Fubuki got spotted by the Allied carrier. So we have some amount of information. We know the ship's in the channel, so there's liable to be someone right there. So you gotta be very careful. Especially with your 7-3 concealment. If you hug through this gap here, there's nowhere to go in terms of going forward or backwards. And if anyone's here inside your spotting range, it's very easy to get caught out. What if Voisky shows up doing shenanigans? Launching for the channel. Hmm. So it's just in case you're launching a set in case the Pensacola comes out or in case the Fubuki sneaks through. It's fine, I guess. So you've decided to move north. Pensacola gets spotted by the Normandy. Or Normandy. You target ping the Pensacola, that's fine. Switch to armor piercing, okay, so you're intending on cutting into the side of the Pensacola with the 150s, that's fine. It's pretty normal for the heavy guns on the Gaeta and also the uh, Lebrick Mass that comes after her. She stops, however, so what will you do? Oh, two cruisers. 
So if you're gonna fight this, it's gonna require a smoke. You're leading someone. You can see that the pentacle is reversing. What about the Alba? You should check the Alba as well. Alright, it might be a replay. I'm assuming you checked the Alba. He's pretty broadside. Yep. Probably would stay with AP. Pentacle comes up now though. Turret rotation means that it's kind of hard. You don't want to take too much damage. The Alba can actually dent you fairly well. Although he's disengaging, so... There's an argument for holding smoke. I know you're busy with other things, but you should be sectoring for the aircraft as well at this point. You're in smoke anyway. But that's a minor detail. High explosive. Yeah, that's fine. He's turning, he's turning. Ah, oh, missed it. So if you anticipate the turn, you want to get AP ready for this salvo, because often you'll only get one salvo with armor piercing. Oof, blind fired really hard. Yeah, so see here by the time you got the AP loaded, you almost missed it. For Thankfully, the Pentacle has very thin armor, but you could have definitely probably killed him a salvo earlier, which would have kept you from taking the 5k by just switching. So you want to see that the enemy, or predict that the enemy is already turning, and then switch for AP then. Sometimes they'll cancel the turn, and then your AP will be kind of wasted, and you expend it into the superstructure instead because you can't guarantee that it's going to hit. But um, at other times, you want to just use it. Just going to duck out of this quickly to make sure it's recording properly. Sorry about that. I think we're good. Alright, so sorry about that, but it's replay anyway, so nothing was happening. Just let it stutter across as the replay catches up. The replay hates being tabbed out of, so that's what caused the stutter you saw there. You popped your speed boost, which is fine. Hydro spot the tortoise was nice, although it was really more for your Normandy than you. So we collect the kill, 5k. <laughs> Took a pretty big chunking though, thanks to taking a full fire. So coming around from the New Mexico. You should know he's going to push through and that the ranger is going to harass him. So you have to be really careful here. Even though the Normandy does die, those ranger dive bombers have a significant chance of coming for you because the next closest target is this Pensacola. And yep, they're going to traverse over you. Oof, dangerous. Now you'd think that your carrier seeing this threatening you might drop you a fighter, but that actually just gives away the game and tells the enemy carrier that you actually are there. So it's better that he didn't drop you a fighter. Well, you do get plane spotted, however. Unfortunately, thanks to the Gaeta's large air detectability, A comes up. I'm assuming you're sectoring. I think you just can't see it inside of a replay. Mind my coffee. So we've been circling here for a while. We collected the one kill, but not doing too much. Our team on the other side is losing. So we got to clean up what we're doing on this side real fast. As you can see, the enemy lines have closed quite significantly on the base. You're escorting the Pensacola, but really you probably want to screen the Pensacola. You can see where the planes have gone, so now it's like relatively safe. You want to either like go out there, check and see that you can kill New Mexico and try and kill it, or just straight up abandon this flank and go back to uh, this cluster over here in this case. If you're leaving, you can dump some torps if you'd like before you go, but at this point you're pretty much disengaged, so you're leaving the Pensacola to his own devices against New Mexico, which uh, can be fine, but it's pretty difficult for a lot of mid-tier cruisers to fight mid-tier battleships just because of the firepower disadvantage. Okay, so you've disengaged. You're done with that flank. That's fine. You're responding to the threat to your base. Fubuki pops up. 
Now, although the 150s are really good at dealing with cruisers, like we saw with the Citadel and the Pensacola, not great at dealing with destroyers like the Fubuki. Pretty low firepower. Probably I would start angling already. I assume your guns are turning the wrong way, yeah. So they're slightly, slightly the wrong way, so you want to look with your camera this way to get them to turn the right way in advance of the combat, because uh, German turrets are pretty sluggish. Oh, they're entirely on the wrong side. And you're spotted. Oh, okay, so now you can engage your guns by turning this way, which does put you into cover, but if you want to chase with your hydro acoustic, which you can because you have the hydro up, then it's much easier to chase the other way. Fubuki has 6-1 detection, Dallas is coming out. I suppose this way is much safer for you, since it shields you from the Dallas if you do need to disengage. Oh, okay. Fubuki does get dropped. Still on high explosive. I would consider switching to armor piercing. Stop here, I assume? Yep. Using the speed boost to help you out. Nice. He's gonna miss the torpedoes, you can already tell he turned in. Oof. 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 Risky late hydro. Thankfully, speed boost is excellent. Ooh, and he does catch the torpedoes. Okay. Good. Sight somewhat risky. The smoke, not necessary, probably. So you don't want to smoke until you absolutely have to fire, and if you have torps in the water that look like they're gonna hit, then you might want to consider holding on to it, because unless he fires at you, you don't want to actually smoke. You can take one salvo, as you did over here. It's that second salvo that you want to smoke for to avoid. So if you think you're gonna take that second salvo, that's when you smoke. Unless, of course, you're low enough. Because at this point in a carrier game, your smoke's pretty valuable. So now you won't be able to gun gunboat for either of these two ships. And that poses a problem because unless you death strike the New Mexico with torpedoes, then you probably are going to end up having to follow up with your guns for follow up fires. Here, they're both going to round the corner and chase your carrier. Your ranger's obviously in trouble. So they're going to go this way, so you want to torp from this angle. So you want to go across here. Unless you do something nonsensical. They could, of course, continue north. They'll continue north for a little bit, I think. To New Mexico, at least, in order to keep all four guns um, exposed. That Alba should die to you shortly. Well, that's short reload, though. Maybe these aren't the 150s. Maybe these are the 128s. Nevertheless, German AP is still German AP. So New Mexico should know he's being stalked. So you're going to get fairly close. Honestly, depending on... Okay, so you get spotted, so he knows where you are for sure anyway. Yeah. I was going to say, depending on when he fires his salvo, you might want to consider open water gunboating. Ranger hits one torpedo. Probably can use armor piercing at this range. He's pretty flat. So for armor piercing, you want to aim right into the um, superstructure. I'll, I'll point it out if you zoom in again. There, there. So you want to aim up here? Yep. Good. Well, you're using high explosive still. Okay, you get a fire. That's fine. So you have a fire now and he's flooding. So now you definitely want armor piercing. Armor piercing right up here into the superstructure. He's starting to angle now. So the belt might start angling. So you would be AP into here. Basically where you're aiming now with the high explosive. Oh, Kraken. Small violin Kraken, I suppose. But because there were enemy ships inside the cap for a short period, you're down on points. So you got to make something happen. You need that kill advantage. So you can either no cap kill all, or you can try to risk the cap, but you only have one smoke and it's a German smoke, which means a ranger will suss you out, more than likely. Only six minutes left in the match as well. So you need a kill advantage, and or you need your ranger to not die. So your ranger's dying, quite clearly. So if the ranger is pushed up with his Mutsu, then you have a shot by going at the Mutsu, otherwise the only shot at the game is to go for the cap. Overall it's not that bad, I think. This is a pretty clean game overall. Probably spent a little too much time here, initially, 
the indecision in deciding whether to stay for these two or to go and go elsewhere and influence the map elsewhere after uh, taking out the Pensacola initially in this channel may have cost you in this case. Because if you responded earlier, maybe you could have kept them from getting into the cap entirely and you wouldn't have this small deficit. And then you'd be even on points. Well, slightly unfavored because they're up points because battleships are worth more than destroyers. But after you kill the Mutsu, which would eventually happen, I assume, then it would have been fine. The carrier might have died, however, so it's kind of hard to say. But the point differential would be different for sure. Ranger dispatches your ranger. You're in pretty big trouble now. Interesting that my voiceover pack overrides whatever you're using in terms of replay. But that's neither here nor there. One rocket plane does suss you out, which means the Mutsu does fire at you. Breaks your engine. This game's pretty lost. Unfortunately. Thankfully, we didn't have you didn't have to duel any like destroyer duties. So because it was a standard battle, the fact that you didn't have a camo mounted onto your ship, or maybe this is um, maybe this is a camo. Maybe this is an anniversary camo. It's pretty white, and maybe you just don't have concealment expert. You're mounting a lot of flags. Fire, free experience, money, experience again. Yeah, he mounted high explosive. Japanese high explosive is pretty good. They just glitch out the replay. Alright, I glitched out the replay. Fantastic. You're invisible. Anyway. <laughs> so I can tell your bow in, even though you're invisible. Carrier trying to suss you out. Your pop hydro. To make sure you can keep firing. But remember, Gaida has a pretty large smoke firing penalty. Oh, your, your allied carrier is still alive. You set a fire, he damn cons. Uh, you gotta be pretty careful. Pretty sure your smoke fire is something like 3735. Pump the speed boost. So I think you get to fire like one salvo and then you should wait. Oof, stutter, stutter, stutter. Lovely. This is free cam. Thanks very much, replay system. Holy moly. Alright, so as you can see, replays are a little buggy. This is why I prefer to record gameplay rather than just use replays, but it's fine. It's not your fault. You beach. Could be a very lethal beaching if that doesn't connect, but it does connect. However, that carrier is gonna come uh, ruin your day, unfortunately. He's pretty close though, you can tell from where the planes are, he's somewhere up here. So, quite obviously if you make a run on him you have a shot, however, at uh, this kind of health, you're pretty screwed. So you expended your smoke there, otherwise you'd have one last smoke. Again, this is from the Fubuki fight, but it wouldn't be on a cooldown anyway, so it didn't end up mattering here. Oof. You can see here though that the saturation is making it so that the one or two rockets he lands on you every pass aren't doing that much damage. But 278 damage, or 278 health, you can no longer really guarantee that you'll survive. Nose in, nose in, nose in, nose all the way in. So against that carrier, you want to nose in, because you know he has the uh, horizontally elliptical aiming reticle, right? So you want to nose in, and at the last second you want to try and jerk yourself to one side to try and dodge it. Oh, screen goes black. Uh, I'm going to just pop up my client, I guess. But in the meantime, let's go to some... Go to some... Hmm. Wouse numbers? Not even Wouse numbers. Uh, Wouse wiki.
So the, the typical Chrome, please. My God. Okay, so Ernest Gaeta as my client loads up. I assume. Oh no, <laughs> World of Warships is overriding it. Sorry, so you didn't see it. World of Warships. Blah, 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 tch, tch, tch. So gun wise, your reload was the rate of fire. Okay, your rate of fire was definitely not eight shots per minute. So I assume you're using the 128s. That's fine. Both guns are both guns are viable. I think 128s are preferred for the tier six. 150s are preferred for the tier seven, and then tier eight. I don't remember. Actually, it might be 128 and then 128 again on the tier seven, and then 150s on the tier eight. Hard for me to recall at this moment. So top hall has 1650. Oh, so you're not running survivability expert. What are you running? I'd almost certainly run survivability expert as my first three point skill. Uh, I don't. You weren't running superintendent either, which is like the second choice for many people on German uh, German destroyers. So you must be running basic fire training, which is fine. But I feel like you don't need basic fire training in a low point captain build until later because if I go to client side, sorry. Uh, yeah, so I feel like you don't need. PFT until later because you do have to go through one of the ships wants to use the 150s so for one of the ships that you go through on the line that means your captain will lose that three point skill for a little bit because you're going to want to do most of the grind with the 150s that's for the torpedoes so you're using the upgraded torpedoes which gain the extra half kilometer of range it's the concealment 7-5 So you, okay, so it's base 7-5 stock, so you must have been running the anniversary camo It's just that you don't have CE That's why you're not down to What's 7.5 times 10 So CE takes off Puts you down to about 6-7 And then the camo puts you down to about 6-6-6-5 Yeah, so some differences I would definitely make with the captain build, but other than that, as we get client side, I think things are fine. I'm gonna reinitiate that, close the Wikipedia page. Okay, so now we're client side. Uh, I'm past the Ernest Guide personally. However, I am still working on my German destroyer line. I personally don't like them that much, but anyway, that aside, so I'm on the Z23 right now, the tier 8, and module-wise, so I believe the tier 8 you want to use the 150s, so you start with the 128s just as before, uh, however if I go to the stock guns, so take note of this, so if in, it's because of this, so in the Z23 of the stock setup you have one gun forward, and three guns to the rear, but when you upgrade to the 150s, the cruiser guns on the Z23, the front gun becomes a twin turret. And so most people do the grind on the Z23 with the uh, 150s. So that's why SE comes secondary to BFT. So I have a torpedo focused Z, well eventually for Z52 captain, but a gun focus is fine because uh, many people because the Z does use those smaller 128s again. So, my build is preventive maintenance into last stand, into survivability expert, into concealment expert. So that's my 10 pointer. So once you get to 10 points, get CE first. You really want to get that concealment down to as competitive as possible. From there, I take my three pointer, my second three pointer. So in this case, because I prefer the torpedo focus build, I take TAE, but this is where you would take BFT in your build. And then I go back for Adrenaline Rush, and then lastly for RPF. Uh, second option, of course, is to just go straight for RPF. So that's the basic 10 points, and then you go into RPF, and then back into 3-pointer, then lastly Adrenaline Rush. Adrenaline Rush is honestly slightly overrated in my opinion. It's very useful all the time, but it's kind of like a small skill compared to a big skill like RPF. 
Uh, and some people also like superintendent. So that does push you up to four smokes, four hydros. So this is obviously very good in long games. But as you saw in the replay just there, even though the teams were a bit smaller, so it was a shorter game than it could have been, uh, you do really have to push to get through all your consumables. It was only at the very end that you were on your last few charges. But it does also mean that that smoke that you um, used a little too aggressively when you're fighting Fubuki wouldn't have mattered as much because you would have had an extra smoke charge. Uh, personally here, I don't think that I need Superintendent. While it's nice to have extra hydros and extra smokes, uh, in my opinion, it's better to just make sure you use them properly and get the job done the first time you hydro a duty you want to kill them or like you want to just be very careful with your smokes and make sure you absolutely need to use them before you pop, pop them because even though the German GGs have pretty shit DPM they have good health pools to trade with so you can kind of trade an extra bit of your health that way in order to get the job done but yeah this is my current German build gonna wrap it up with RPF and uh, it'll be done by then because this is already 15 points, 16 points stored up. I also run this captain on my Z39, which is basically just Z28, but missing a gun, to be quite frank. Oh, not that captain. No, 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 that's my Grash Bay captain. But anyhow, yeah, like generally, uh, destroyer gameplay wise. was pretty fine. Didn't have too much to argue with. I don't have too many analogs for you, but um, I guess since we're here, I can just tack on some gameplay onto this for you. So I'll show you how I generally play the ship. So just this is a premium, the Z39, pretty solid premium. Uh, she has the 150s, so She's a bit different. She has a AXY setup, so one gun forward, two guns at the back. But I guess I'll bring this out for a round just to show you how I play. I have a much higher point captain than you note, and it's a slightly different tier, so tier 7 can have good matchmaking, can have bad matchmaking. We'll see. But overall, the playstyle of German destroyers is all quite similar. They're all hybrid torpedo boats. With pretty mediocre gun power and honestly pretty mediocre torpedo power too but the torpedoes come very frequently thanks to the short torpedo reload hopefully we don't stay too long in queue otherwise you might get bored out of your mind but it is what it is i'm gonna put on a little bit of music hmm what do i want to put on Probably not a documentary. <laughs> I'll have to make sure it's quiet too. Oh, that's loud. All right, so we're into the game. So we're on the Haven, the mode's domination. We're in tier 6 to 8 matchmaking, so we're middle tier, ranger game, and ryujo game, so stuff to be careful of. So Vanklin, Vanklin, Farag, and Hatsuharu, so I beat all of those destroyers except for the Hatsu. So Hatsu is 5-8. Now I'm pretty competitive inside this matchmaking bracket, so I'm at 6-1. Oh my, okay, this is louder than I thought. Okay, there we go, Jesus. Sorry about that. So obviously I have my AA off, if you check here my AA range is 3.5, my air detectability is 2.8, so obviously keep it off. So yeah, as I was saying, you beat the Frenchies, pretty much everyone beats the Frenchies, as far as I'm concerned, except maybe the Russians if you don't run CE. And then Farrah gets like 6-4 or some shit like that, and then I'm, this guy's 5-8, so we get beaten by 5-8, oh, RF Farrah get the ten. gotta be a little careful this guy. Cruiser-wise, Hydro, Hydro, and then the Bayard, which may or may not have Hydro, and then some scary BBs, including a Sinopee. 
So, just heading into the match here, gonna fight for C. Due to the nature of the map... Now, normally I'd dive in straight, but I think I'm gonna reverse in. Unfortunately, the good parts come up here with me. Hmm. So that's gonna be fairly risky cap. I'm gonna start pre-turning my 150s. So my 150s, as you can see, turn very slowly. So once you get to a ship with the 150... Like, in general, I think German turrets turn fairly slowly, but... There's so much more you need than expert marksman that you don't end up taking it. The gun power's not the primary draw anyway, so we know the fair gets in the cap backed up by a Bayard. If I had RPF, I could RPF pre-torp him. I know my concealment beats him, but as you can see from my fairly large concealment bubble, I think I'm going to be almost immediately spotted, so I'm going to pop speed boost and in, in anticipation of taking the fight. Yep. And here he is. Pop smoke, pop hydro. Oh, that's a Fanklin, whatever. Whatever. It's not the point. We just. The point is, we know we beat him. Set a fire immediately. Just looking to reset it. Now remember. I smoke just so that he doesn't stop and fight me. I don't want to take any extra fire, but I'm going to leave the smoke. Obviously, being forced out by my. um by his torpedoes, but I do want to get into the cap. Now I beat everything except the Hatsuharu. We see another Venklin here, we see the Hatsuharu here, so we know the RF fair gets over there. I'm gonna take this cap quickly. No, my torpedoes are up, so the torpedoes on this thing are 8.5 kilometers, 65 knots, 81 second reload, and kind of mediocre damage. Pretty standard German torpedoes. Venklin coming back. Bard going around. He's not going to charge the corner, right? Ooh, that's his other set? No, that's not. That can't be. So that tells me that the other Vanklin came up to here and torped. Because they came from about there, right? So yeah, that's the other Vanklin. Well, Hydra's still running. I used it to contest and keep myself safe. Unfortunately, oh, sorry. Ping stutter. Hopefully it doesn't kill me. York does pop up, so York's pretty risky prospect. Don't really want to fight this. So I'm just gonna dump fish and try and disengage. Especially this close to a York. He outguns me by a lot. Note my enormous hit point pool though. For a tier 7 destroyer, 22,000 is. I'm a, I'm a dinosaur. Basically a dinosaur. Trying to disengage, need to get the 6 1. He's gonna kite away. I aimed ahead on the torpedo lead, you'll note. I have an ally here who's shooting, so I don't want to leave him out to dry, so I am going to engage now. But note, pretty low gun power on this thing. This thing's forced to use the anti-cruiser rifles. Got a fire. Since we engaged, going to try and get a follow-up fire. So note, if your ally engages, if it doesn't cost you too much to engage, you really should engage. So I plan to disengage, right? But then the Akatsuki opened up, which kind of forced me to help him out. Because you don't want to leave your teammates to dry, even if they're making a decision you don't agree with. If it's not overly punishing for you to like help them, then you should help them. So even though I was trying to disengage there, I opened up anyway. Did get a follow-up fire? Massachusetts is there now though, so... Time to get the hell out of here. My Hydro and Smoke have long timed out. Or Hydro and Speed Boost, sorry. Note my Torps are back up, even though I launched them quite recently to screen off the Vanklin. Oh, both their Vanklins are still up. So that's the first guy we chased off. No, that's the guy we recently chased off, isn't it? I can't even tell. They're so high health. Take a big shell from the Massachusetts. Kind of want to check out the other cap now that we've driven off the other two destroyers. Also kind of want to dump fish, but the Massachusetts is kiting away. So I'm fighting pretty aggressively at the cap. I have a spotting advantage over the Vanklin, as, the, as, the, as does the Akatsuki. I'm slowing here. He's low enough where he's worth finishing. My allies might finish him for me though, so I'm not going to reveal myself unless I absolutely have to. Good. Other Vanklin's out on the flank, so he's basically dead to me. I don't care if Vanklin's out there personally. 
He's not my job to deal with unless he's inside a cap. Is it nice now pushing into the cap, but he's fairly low, so he's gonna die. Is a smoke? Is there shooting out of the smoke? So do know there might be a Helena. Based on last known. Can't tell how many shells that is, but I can tell that someone's there. So that's a pre-smoke or pre-torp. Gotta do it soon though, because he's my nice now is dying. And once he dies, they'll have no incentive to stay there. Do you have to watch the Ryuho? Remember my 2.0. Oh god, it's not that at all. So it ends up being a Farragut. Hop my Hydro Acoustic immediately. I'm gonna pop smoke as I come forward. Harass this RF Farragut. Using my Hydro to bully him. I am gonna chase because I have HP advantage. Do note there's a Helena in the area though. So this is a pretty aggressive chase considering there's a fucking Helena over there. Just wanna get what damage I can onto him. There's a fighter over me, so let's get out of here. I'm gonna disengage. Eliminate the planes. And now it's time to bail. Farragut smokes up, but my torpedoes are back up, and I did dodge out on most of the damage, and thanks to my survivability expert granting me an extra sizable chunk. No wait, see what he wants to do, looks like he might turn out all the way I would expect. Remember I have the anti-cruiser rifles. I kinda want a repair party, but if I might fire on this uh, Helena, which is fast closing on my position, I want to not get set on fire. Uh oh. So, I see a Riho fighters. He's taking the turn, however. I preloaded AP. My engine's pretty slow. Alright, so that's a bit problematic. Because the carrier knows where I am now. I want to keep the A off still anyway, until the last possible second. I'm gonna get spotted, so I'm fighting the RF guy. Note that I used my smoke earlier, now I have damage control. Now I could quite possibly have used it earlier. My A is pretty shit. Using my enormous bulk to trade with Farragut. German ballistics are also better than him. Last stand, keeping my rudder going. Uh, trying desperately to fire, but I can't really. I shoot down as many of the planes as I can. AA back off. We are gonna win, I think. But it's not no fault of mine. Now, it's kind of tempting to re-engage here, but remember, there's a Hatsuharu. I'm waiting on my consumables. Don't have Hydro. My smoke's not up for a little bit. So instead, what I'm gonna do is just smoke or torp towards the smoke. Note, I haven't actually landed any of my fucking torps but I'm using them to as tools more to zone. I fight with my guns. Torps are just a tool to hold position in this case because I'm fighting so much with the destroyers. I'm fighting over the cap zone. I'm gonna need help from this guy. If I want this cap. Oh, okay, so plane spots both of them for me. I will prefer the Hatsuharu, mainly because he outspots me. Now open up. Now while my big meaty anti-cruiser guns don't have very good anti-destroyer performance, they do have pretty good fire starting capability. I think it's something like 8%, which is obviously quite good. I want my Akatsuki to help me out. Now note there's a sin up on the side, but we'll deal with him after. My carrier does help me dispatch the RF Farragut. 
And he lights up that Hatsuharu, who has a broken engine. And he finishes him off. Nice. Oh, thanks to our carrier, we get to fight for the cap. And thanks to us surviving the carrier, thanks to our enormous bulk, we get to take it. So 350 HP per level on SE by 7, because I'm a tier 7, means that I have an extra... Oh gosh, math is hard. 50... So an extra 2,450 health. So we can stalk the Sinop. Hopefully he hasn't turned in. If he turns in, he might actually see me, so I need to turn out. The Akatsuki has inferior concealment to me, actually. 6-4 versus my 6-1, but... Yeah, okay, so we have to be very careful there, because if he turned in there, he would have spotted both of us. We're turning for the West Virginia. This guy helped me out. I helped him out. So, given the manner, we'll ignore the synop for now. Not really gonna compete with him. I'm more interested here in like. Show, demonstrating the gameplay here, but as a randoms player, if you're playing solo, you probably would turn around for the Sinop. Like, he's pretty much close to full, so it's a dev strike, whereas this West Virginia is obviously being quite farmed. Be careful. In case anything happens, just gonna launch my German torpedoes. As I mentioned, they don't do that much damage, but you're free to just launch them whenever. Oh, do touch the West Virginia's spawning. Let me see if I can demonstrate the AEP, the anti-cruiser AP. So as I mentioned, upper casemate. Only the front rifle is ready, unfortunately, but... Pretty solid chunk. Underlet that one. Oh, overpens. Switch back to high explosive. I think that Ryuho is somewhere inside my spotting bloom. So Ryuho is pretty stealthy as a hull. 8.4 concealment. Or 8.6 actually, but something really high. Now he's inside of A, but I don't care the synop that is. I left him to the Akatsuki. Someone with RPF tells me exactly which square. Okay, they're, they're dead wrong. He's like here. They're like super dead wrong. Now Ryuho rockets, if you remember from our Ryuho video, has this very nice tight circular reticle. I'm gonna lock my turrets onto this side. Just so that I can watch the planes more carefully. So I was about to sector there. But anyhow, you saw there mainly uh, in this Z52. So this is the Z39, she's a premium. She's actually more of a torpedo boat than a gunboat, even though you didn't see me land any fucking torpedoes in this game. But I do play her as a standard German destroyer, so that's the aim is to hold the cap and control the cap. So as you saw there, I was using my Hydra to bully people out, use my guns to shoot people, use my big HP pool to trade, and then I use my torpedoes to zone off targets. Switch ammunition when needed, avoid planes as necessary with AA off, but overall looking to just control caps. Anyhow. Uh, yeah, not the Ernest guy at it, unfortunately. Moved past that one, don't have a captain for her, but uh, hopefully the overall review of both your replay and this Z39 gameplay here was somewhat helpful to you. Uh, anyhow, that'll be all for now, and I hope you enjoy. Cheers.